So, on to slippers of the Sea Caller from Nagentus, the first boss in Black Temple. Now, this is perhaps one of the low key, scariest items to try and allocate. It's very clearly the best caster's boot slot option in phase three. However, there are some strong alternatives for Boomkin and Elemental Shamans in Nature's Warden Dreads and Boots of Oceanic Fury, respectively. So you should be quite cutthroat here and prioritise your locks and mages. Shadow Priests are probably having a thought here, but unfortunately, this is kind of what I was talking about with the Leggings of Channeled Elements. You're going to be pretty low on Shadow Priests at times. This is one of those times. So I'd be tentative for offering a prior between mage and lock, since top performers will pump hard. So my safe recommendation is Warlock equals Mage, followed by Shadow Priest, followed by Elemental equals Boomkin. Next we have Guys of the Tiger Lurker. This is a good stopgap option, but nothing more. It's a little bit worse than Tier 6 for Rest of Druids, but this is a good option. Next we have Mantle of Darkness. This is very, very close to Biss for Enhance. Believe it or not, you know, no sockets, no nothing. It sort of looks a bit wonky. When I first looked at this, I was kind of like surprised it was good. Then I sort of realized, oh wait, that's actually 94 AP. You know, it's got big, big green stats on it. So ultimately, this is exceptionally close to the crafted shoulders for Enhance and the expertise shoulders from SSC. They're all very, very, very close um, within a margin of error. The best location for this, or rather probably the only location of actual note, is Enhance here. Anyone else that wants it comes after. Enhance first. This is a good helm whilst Rest of Shamans await their tier 6. Similarly, for Holy Palace, they could use this whilst they're waiting too. Um, looks kind of cool too. Depending on your taste, I guess. <laughs> Fist of Makoa. Now, this is the second best option Till, the, till Enhanced Shamans can get Grips of Damnation, so you would go Pure Enhanced Shamans first here. Don't get me wrong, they would prefer Grips of Damnation, and Grips of Damnation also has pretty much no competition either, but just so you know, these can go on your Enhanced Shamans as a nice sort of upgrade whilst we're getting to our this setups. Boots of Oceanic Fury, these are what I was talking about. These are the go-to elemental boots whilst you wait for the slipper situation to even out a little bit, you know, it's pretty rough when everybody wants slippers, but yeah. Boots of Oceanic Fury, Elemental Shamans, all good. Then we've got Eternium Shell Braces. Tanks, of course, but there are better options, so whatever. Pearl and Laid Boots, these are Holy Pala Biss. So, Holy Pala. I mean, they're the only ones that could use them, so there you go. Next, we have Prop Pala Biss. Pretty obvious. Let's go. Ring of Calming Waves. Now... This opens up one of those future discussions, which is kind of irritating. I wish the good loot was a little bit earlier in the loot tables so we could get those long discussions out of the way. It'd make it a little bit more, make more sense, but bear with me here. So first, pretty much all healers beside Holy Pala are looking to get Blessed Band of Karabor. It's a haste healing ring from Trash. It's super damn good. Druids want it to hit their 5 GCD breakpoint with double uh, Blessed Band. And priests and shamans are desperate for all the haste to pump out their AoE heals as fast as they can. I wouldn't go into too much detail about best band yet, but generally speaking, you want your prior, your holy pal on here as it is their best ring, and they are not actually competing for blessed band. So straight off the bat, holy pal. Notably, rest of juries prefer the vash ring and the exalted rep ring if they aren't using the five GCD setup. So you can lower their prio on blessed band and Ultimately, you know, it can fit in here, but they don't want it either. They don't want either if they're using four GCDs. They're looking for the Vash Ring and the Exalted Rep Ring. So again, Druids are near the bottom. Crit not so good, obviously, for the rest of Druids. And then whilst Holy Priests do prefer the Vash Ring, the Coral Band of the Revived, they're still somewhat interested in this if they haven't got Blessed Band or Coral Band yet. So ultimately... You're sort of in a sort of weird priority where Holy Pallor are the clear option, very clearly the best option. Then you've got quite a big drop off in value to your shamans and priests. Then your druid, who's very much not so keen on the whole spell crit kind of thing, looking at the coral band, looking at the rep ring. And if they've got those, they're just in the waiting for blessed band, like every other healer. So this moves us on to Ring of Capture Storms, which will mean I'll talk about yet another different ring. Than the one I'm actually talking about. So 
This is basically a consolation prize given that pretty much all spellcasters want Ring of Ancient Knowledge. A haste ring from trash. Yeah. This plus the exalted rep ring is the go-to before either one or two of Ring of Ancient Knowledges feel Warlocks, Mages, Boomkins and Elementals. And Shadow, for that matter. Yeah. So you kind of get the picture, right? Let, uh, Ring of Ancient Knowledge, highly, 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 highly prioritized. Now I have an interesting proposition here, and it relates to, once again, another very well-made point for, in the Wowhead Warlock Guide. And again, people often go Wowhead Kek W, but they've been paying some very smart boys recently to be basically compiling Discord stuff, usually the theory crafters themselves, into fantastic guides. Um, and Zephyr's guide is really, really was really helpful in, in, in a number of ways. These notes were very good. So notably, there is proof from 2007 that Warlocks and Shadow Priests can solo portions of Black Temple trash. Yeah, you get where I'm going with this. Because they can, in theory, and probably most likely if they're a loot goblin, solo trash in Black Temple for Ring of Ancient Knowledge, it makes sense that in your raids, where you are the you know, discretion over loot, that you give the Warlocks and the Shadow Priests the sort of consolation prizes first in the Ring slot, because if they really, really, really want Ring of Ancient Knowledge, they can just really, really go solo it. That might be a bit of a hardcore take. I know that won't be for everybody. But ultimately, it's one of those things where I feel like it's such a contested item. If you can solo it, why wouldn't you try it every now and then to solo it? Like, just why wouldn't you? Maybe that's just a, a sort of different perspective. Maybe some people won't agree with that. Um, but I, I do think it makes sense. And, and to be honest, I think a lot of people are going to do trash runs anyway as, as small or large groups anyway, just because of the trash items actually have value. So in this case, you know, I would actually prioritize the specs that can ironically solo a better option just because the specs that can't solo it obviously are, you know, have less opportunity to get the ring. So giving them a slight prior on ring of ancient knowledge, which we'll get to, is perhaps the play. And this ring can go to your Warlocks and Shadow Priests, if they want it, that is, um, whilst they await their soloing expeditions to go well. You might feel differently. That's okay. That's kind of where I'm going with it. Warlocks and Shadow Priests first, followed by the rest, because the rest can't solo Ring of Ancient Knowledge. Next, the Maelstrom's Fury. So this is another stopgap, really. A waiting room style item for... Basically, everyone that can't use Tempest of Chaos, but can use Zardu. Let's be real though, it's still pretty decent. It's not massive over the Phase 2 options. But this one mostly relates to your Elementals and Boomkins, particularly in regards to how we discussed Hammer of Judgment earlier. Elementals are desperate to avoid hit, generally speaking, um, and even more so than other casters this phase. So I'd give a slight nudge to the Elementals over Boomkins. Boomkin is probably next because they utilize crit a lot better than Shadow Priest does. But either way, all three of those specs are in the Zardoom waiting room. And obviously they are utility specs. They are you know, less pumpery than the other spellcasters. Not that that's an actual word, but you know, either way. So ultimately, you have this sort of token stopgap item that is nice whilst they wait for Zardoom. Now, the main thing to think about here is simply... Am I rewarding a Boomkin, Elemental, or Shadow Priest with Zardoom in the near future? Say, for example, I don't know, one of your most helpful raiders, or most hard, or try hard, helpful, uh, I don't know, another adjective that's positive, raiders is a Shadow Priest, for example, and you plan to give them Zardoom relatively early. Maybe not the first one, but relatively early. Just pass them over here. They won't care. They really won't. If it gets them Zardoom sooner, and you plan to do it anyway, just just put it elsewhere. Just a small note. So to summarize, Elemental first, followed by Boomkin, followed by your Shadow Priests, and God forbid if a Warlock or Mage gets stuck with this, they might be very, very, very sad, but um, I guess if they haven't got anything better, sure, throw it on them. All good. Rising Tide. Kind of okay. Main spec over off spec. Probably an Enhanced Shaman that is a new reroll or had bad luck on weapons. I don't know. But nothing too crazy here. Don't worry about it. Howbird of Desolation. This is pretty good for any hunters looking to do the whole two-hander thing. Um, really good even if that is the jam that you're looking to play. But ultimately, the two one-hander situation 
is better on paper. So don't worry too hard here, but it's mostly your hunters that are going to want this. I, I guess your Rep Pally could potentially use this for a little while, but realistically, it's going to be a hunter that wants to be a two-hand boy. That simple. Supremus next. Now, Wayshap of Infinity. I think I've already mentioned this very slightly. It's a great option other than a Nether on the Noose, which we've always seen in the Mount Hijau section. It's fairly close, but not quite for most specs, essentially. But there is one spec that prefers this hasty boy. That Shadow Priest, hell yeah. So Shadow Prior. Then, we did mention before that Arcane Mages that aren't being given Shroud of the Highborn do value this waste over a Netheron's Noose. So naturally, Shadows and Arcanes are going to be your prior here if you are following my recommendation of not giving DPS as Shroud of the Highborn. We are going to talk about it. Don't crucify me yet until you hear it, please. Um, that's about it. Next one. Nether Shadow Tunic. A very competitive option for Enhances if they haven't got Midnight Chess Guard yet. Now, I would not be surprised if the Rep Paladins in the comments are like, hey, Nether Shadow Tunic exists. The Enhance can take it whilst we take Midnight Chess Guard. That's not necessarily the worst suggestion in the world. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's a good alternative. Enhances want this, potentially, if they don't have Midnight Chess Guard. But, again, Midnight Chess Guard should resolve itself relatively soon, hopefully. So, not the biggest deal, but Enhances can use this well. Bands of the Coming Storm. Disenchant, I think, most of the time. Can't say that I'd be surprised. Wraps of Precise Flight, again... Kind of looking like a disenchant to me, on average. Then we've got Nashrus Preserving Cinch, which is Rest of Shaman Biss. They love haste, feed them haste. That's all you need to know about Rest of Shamans, literally. Pauldrons of Abyssal Fury. DE, I think. That's. I mean, it might be okay in a, in a specific scenario, but or in as a catch-up item, but it, it's just... It's probably a crystal, or crystals, rather. So, yeah. Then we got into Choker of Endless Nightmares. Now this is the neck I was talking about with Serrated Blades. This is going to be a little bit better. In particular, I think it's a little bit better more so for Rogues than Serrated Blades compared to the other specs. But realistically, it's all the physical DPSers um, that kind of want the Serrated Blades or this. Realistically, I would just go with whoever wants it, if that makes sense. They're so close together for in most cases that it just seems a little bit ridiculous to nitpick when there's two options that are so close. I know that some specs will have a slight preference either way, but it's a rough one. I just honestly CBA and you should CBA too. Next. Band of the Abyssal Lord. Now this is prop warrior bits. It's good. It's pretty damn good. Chonky, hit rating, happy days. Idol of the White Stag. DE. Next. The Brutalizer. This is Prop Warrior Biss, unless you're a human. At least so they tell me. There is a slightly better threat option, which humans see as their Biss because it's a sword, but as a standalone overall option, I'm told this is the very best Prop option, especially if you're an Orc, obviously, because it's an axe. Happy days. It also looks kind of cool. I don't know. It looks like a Lego-based key, almost. I don't know, but Happy days. Then we've got the biggest joke of an item model, but actually very, very strong. This is basically Enhanced Biss. The only competitive option, or slightly better option if you're an Orc, is Double Season 3 Axe. But for everybody else, two of these bad boys. But that's just a smaller version of an item you might have already got in Phase 1 from a Heroic as part of your previous. Thanks, Blizz. Next. Fellstone Bulwark. This is the shield we've spoken about early on in the first half of this video in Mount Hijau. This is Holy Pala Prior because they can use the crit very well compared to the rest of Shamans. But I, I think Holy Paladins do prefer Bastion. I'm just not 100% sure. Holy Paladins do seem a little bit torn on it. But either way, it's a good healing shield. I'd put it on your Holy Paladins first. Simple. Legion Killer. Prop Warrior Biss. Say no more. Next, Shade of Akama. Now, this looks kind of cool, but it's just one of those main spec over off spec or DE items. 
Next up, we've got Focused Mana Bindings, Main Spec over Off Spec, but probably DE. Spell Hit is basically a no-no for most casters this phase, and Braces of Nimble Thought, say hello fam. Craft them, they're very, very good. Next, we have Wristbands of Divine Influence. Again, Main Spec over Off Spec, DE. Swift Heal Braces, say hello fam. Next, we have Shadow Walker's Cord. This is the second best rogue belt this phase behind 100 deaths, so stick it on your 100 D-less rogues. Not bad on a 100 D-less ret either. Next, Guilt of Immortal Nature. This is basically the item you're going to give to your rest of druids until your holy priest or priests have the, what are they called, eternity? Leggings of eternity. So these are good. They will fill the slot until eternity is free from the priests. That simple. Next, we have again an okay shoulder piece, but it's main spec over off spec DE. No one really is too bothered by this. Next, we have Spirit Walker Gauntlets. These are actually pretty decent for your rest of shamans. Again, spell haste, baby. Spell haste. But they're a lot worse than the other haste gloves. These are not the haste gloves I was talking about. There's a leather version that have this stat line basically with two sockets on. Yeah. Yeah. So, these are okay for now, for as a stopgap, but ultimately, these are just not, not as hot as the leather ones. Flashfire Girdle, this is your elemental bis belt. Really nice item. Super, super elemental, of course. So, happy days. Next, Seeker's Wrist Guards. Prop Paladins. Say no more. Next, Groups of Silent Justice. These are sick. These are one of the factors in why I'm pretty high on the three-piece setup for Fury Warriors in particular, but also Arms Warriors, because it's just a really good item. It, it would suck to, like, DE them, basically. Uh, so, either way, these are the best for DPS Warriors. Um, it does rely on some contested items like Cursed Vision, but, as I said, big fan of the three-piece setup. I'd lean Fury here first, because they just pump real hard. Like, it's really hard when, when you're... It must suck being an arms warrior, really, because if you've got a Fury Warrior in the raid, they don't provide a buff, or at least a buff that you can't provide, and um, they just do a lot more damage and therefore get the loot, at least if you're like being super strict with it. But <laughs> either way, these are fantastic. Put them on your DPS warriors. Ret Rets can use them if they're lacking expertise options, but I'm sure they've got the searing grips by now. So, happy days, warriors. Next, Prop Warrior Biss. Simple, really. Like, I don't even know what to add. This is kind of getting awkward, how there's not a lot to say about some items. But sure. This is also Prop Warrior Abyss. Happy days. No contestation, really. Next, we have Resync R uh, Ring of Deceitful Intent. This is a good candidate to go to Rogues and Enhancers first. They don't get a lot of love across the board, at least not as much as maybe some other specs. And this is the best ring to pair with the Rep Ring, if you still do not have Storm Rage Signet Ring. Besides that, it's okay on your BM Hunters and Feral Druids, specifically Feral Tanks, I want to say. I could be wrong on that one. I'm a Feral Druid, so I should know, but I think it's Tanks that want this more so than the, <laughs> the Monocats. But either way, you're basically going Rogue first, Enhance next, then you've got Feral Tank and BM Hunter. Blind Seer's Icon. When I looked at this one and was writing the script, part of my brain said, I've seen this somewhere mentioned. But I couldn't find that source again, so I'm just going to say main spec over off spec. Not trying to scam you, I just honestly didn't think it was good enough to search for an hour or whatever to try and find exactly where I read about it. So I think this is just a main spec over off spec, maybe even DE sometimes. So yeah. Now we have Shroud of Forgiveness. Now I've already touched on the fact that I advise you to gear your rest of druid for a standard four global cooldown set early on just because the competition on haste items is rough until phase four releases and there is you know a bit more haste items around alleviates this kind of issue of wanting to stack haste you want to put this on your rest of druids because you're not giving them all the haste juice give them at least the big pump juice and this is a really nice cloak given that it's not called shadow of the highborn it's, it's really good. It's got the high healing. It's got spirit. Happy days. But it's not that much different from 
to the Kale Cloak. So it's not a massive deal, but I'd go Rest of Druids first here because you're going to be a bit kinder to Holy Priests across the board on the haste items first. So, yeah. Next we have Blood Curse Shoulder Pads. May spec over off spec. Probably a DE. Same for this one, Garments of Temperance. Then we've got Belt of Primal Majesty. Now, Rest of Druids want this for their 5 global cooldown set. Besides that, the Bis Rest of Shaman Belt is basically this, but male. So you can go for your Rest of Shamans if you get bad luck on the male version. Um, but, because your Rest of Druid is probably getting tired of getting passed over for spell haste items, I would still go Rest of Druid first here, just because your Rest of Shamans do have a male option, and it will get tedious to be that Rest of Druid getting passed over on every haste item early on. So, whilst this is exceptional for your Rest of Shamans, it's not male, and there's a male equivalent, basically. So, Go Rest of Druid first here, but it is also fantastic for your Rest of Shaman, just pointing out. Next we have Vent Vest of Mounting Assault. This is again, main spec over off spec, cash up item, probably DE item. Then we've got Prop Pala Bis, I believe, this belt. Pretty fantastic. It's got block value, so not too crazy, but it's very, very good. Happy days. Girdle of Stability. Prop Warriors. Now, if they're going for threat, they're probably going to want 100 deaths, or already have 100 deaths, but for a chunky boy set, prop warriors. Leggings of Divine Retribution. This is DPS warriors all day. This is the off piece of choice, even if the warrior is going for four piece and not using grips of Silent Justice or Cursed Vision. This is just really good. Next, we have Unstoppable Aggressor's Ring. Now, this is a very strong ring for DPS warriors, rep paladins, and Feral off tanks slash mono cats. As long as you're doing a lot of DPS duties of Feral, this is very good. But it depends on so many factors that ultimately you are putting them at the bottom. I'll throw that out there immediately. Warriors, though, will use this ring no matter what they own this phase. This is their second best ring behind the Storm Ray Signet ring. So they're always going to use it, no matter what. No matter what other options there are, they'll use it. So DPS Warriors prior here. I don't think it warrants a pry between Arms and Fury. It's not that big of an item. It is very good, though. Now, the reason why Rets are below Warriors is because they do have a spicy little option called Ring of Devastation. There is absolutely almost no competition for it. So it just gets slammed on your Rets, and it kind of fills the gap of this one. Um, again, they do want Storm Rage Signet Ring. Um, so ultimately... It is one of those things where you're going to put this and Devastation on them or Storm Rage Signet Ring and Devastation on them. But essentially, because Devastation exists, it alleviates how prior how much you have to prioritize your rets on rings because that ring is entirely free to them, basically. Furthermore, Enhancers are in a similar situation. Um, they're going to use this plus Ring of Deceitful Intent or this and Storm Rage Signet Ring because Ring of Deceit Deceitful Intent exists, and the competition isn't too crazy there. I'm a little bit lower than I am with the Warriors. So ultimately, the prior is Warrior over Enhance, equal to Ret over Feral. So Feral's last. Slightly ahead of those, you've got Enhance and Ret, and then at the top, your Warriors. Shadow Moon Insignia. Now, this one is basically main tank bear prior. Like, it, it's fantastic... It's going to fill a niche in a lot of sets. You know how like tanks change lots of stuff all the time based on encounters? This one is really, really good. Also having that last stand effect is, yeah, you guessed it, really, really good for a class that has absolutely no unused cooldowns to save their bacon, apart from bark skin, which pulls, which is like fine, but pulls you out of bear form, so not the best. And ultimately, you know, it's defense, dodge, it works out for crit, uh, for uh, for. Next, we have Shadow Moon Insignium. Now, this is your main tank bear prio. Basically, it's super versatile. Fits in a bunch of sets that your tank's going to switch between, and ultimately, the other tanks aren't as keen on it. They can use it well. Don't get me wrong, but it's definitely feral main tank prio followed by your plate boys, and then your off tank might, might want to pick it up if you have a feral off tank. But ultimately. This is fantastic for your main tank feral. 
They will use it the most. They'll get the most from it. Put it there. Messenger of Fate. Not an absolutely awful weapon, but yeah. I don't know, Chief. Anywhere will do. Similar to this one. Anywhere will do. If someone can use it well, give it to them. Because it, it just pales in comparison to Apostle. It pales in comparison to Crystal Spire, of course. And it's, you know, on average, just not as useful as Fathom or Hammer of Atonement, was it? Plus an offhand. Like, it, it, it's just one of those things where you shove it and try to get as much usage from it as you can. Um, it looks kind of nice if you're into the angelic kind of things, but, I mean, it's not even the best spirit stuff, I don't think, because it's actual spirit's pretty low. It has MP5 instead. So even the PvPers might look at this and be like, yeah, I don't know. So overall, put it anywhere. Just try and get some usage out of it. Next, we have Wonder Prismatic Focus. Again, main spec over off spec. Try and get some value from it. It isn't as good as the Forgotten Star one, which I will admit I didn't really look into too much, or enough, rather, in Phase 2. That one's sick. This one is okay, but not like that one, basically. Next, we have Gloves of Unfailing Faith. These are nice. They're pretty good. But a priest will probably use Tier 5 or Tier 6. So it's one of those ones where you could put it on your Resta Druid that's still waiting for the Botanist Gloves. Those are the Haste Gloves I've spoken about a few times. So there's, it can go to your Holy Priest or your Resta Druid. It's basically a stopgap. It, be, it might be slightly better on your Resta Druid just because of the fact that they will be replaced in their glove slot. But priests will use tier 5 a lot of the time, early on at least, until they're waiting for tier 6. So maybe rest of it here. But either way, it doesn't matter. It's a stop there. Elenite Empowered Braces. Okay. These are okay. But Crafted Haste Braces. Say hello. Pretty much. Grips of Damnation. We've spoken about these briefly. Enhanced Prior. Slightly better than Fists of McCoy. Done. Nature Warden's Tread. These are the slipper stand-ins for Boomies and Elementals. Elementals have the Oceanic Fury option, so these are Boomy Prio followed by Elemental. Happy days. Wave Mender's the Wave Mentals Mantle. That's actually kind of hard to say at this hour of the day. Um, main spec over off spec. Probably Disenchant because Crafted from Leatherworking and Tier 6 are better. Bone Weave Girdle. This is really nice for your enhances that do not have a belt of 100 deaths. It's also pretty decent on your hunters, but it's not as good as the damn boy belt. So give your hunters the damn boy belt. Next. Crown of Empowered Fate. Really nice Holy Paladin helm whilst they wait for tier 6 helm. Pretty much the only way place you can put it as well. So, yeah. Now, Jetbrutes of the Legion. This one, this one's going to be an item that has a very clear prior. I'm not going to spend very long talking about who it goes to first, but there is a small thing about Rep Paladins that might not be super popular later on. But um, we'll work through it. We'll work through it. All right, hear me out. This is DPS Warrior Abyss, absolute DPS Warrior Abyss, so they get it first all day. But these are a very good Rep Paladin option as well. Now, don't get me wrong. Rep Paladins are looking at Cursed Vision for their hit slot item, and they do have major issues with the hit cap because they just don't need very much. In a Boomkin setup, they only they only need three percent hit, so it's 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 a it's a struggle. But in truth, these existing and being as good as they are, kind of like does influence the curse vision uh, sort of situation. In in my opinion, at least, I I know that might not be super popular with those of you that play Rep Paladin. We are going to touch on it a little bit more when we get to curse vision, but. I do want to point out here that I would rather... I don't think it makes sense to DE these early on because you're trying to force your ret into a Cursed Vision situation early, if that makes sense. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. But I want to warn, pre-warn you that these are one of those items where don't give them to your warriors and then sort of like get fobbed off and DE them because your ret paladin's looking for a different setup. Shove them on your ret paladins as soon as you can once the, the warriors have them, and it will help with the curse vision situation. Essentially, I, I, I wouldn't. I would. Uh, yeah, just keep an eye out for that because th there's an element where 
where everybody wants Cursed Vision, and this is one of those ones that helps alleviate that competition. A little bit like the Tempest, Zardune kind of situation, where you're trying to, from a guild perspective, you're trying to alleviate some issues rather than focus entirely on individual gains. So, just something to keep in mind. Bit of a ramble. I apologise. Alright, so next we have Translucent Spell Thread Necklace. This is a great neck, but you'll find that this has quite a medium sort of demand. Casters like Arcane, Boomkin, Elemental Shaman, they're still going to run uh, Rock, Sunking Talisman, and Kale Thass. Whilst Fire Mages and Fire Warlocks are going to use Hellfire and Case Pendant. This basically leaves the Shadowy Boys. I'd lean towards Shadow Warlocks just because they do more damage on average, but it, it doesn't matter too much. Shadow Boys first, followed by Main Spec over off Spec, because the Fire Boy is going elsewhere, and the other boys, they've already got their neck, hopefully. Pendant of Titans. This is okay for both plate tanks, specifically you know, your prop warriors. Darkness Grasp is a lot better for your paladin. And again, apologies for missing that, or at least not mentioning it verbally on the Phase 2 video. I did edit the sheet. I hope you saw that. In terms of the warriors, though, they prefer PvP neck for resilience. So this is good, but not great. Touch of Inspiration. Solid offhand for Druids and Priests waiting for separate purification. That's the summary. That's all that matters. Torch of the Damned. Ret Paladin Biss. It's okay for Armour's Warrior, but just not a sword. So, Ret Paladins. Naru Blessed Life Rod. Uh, this is going to your Priests, of course. I mean, it's just a Priest Wand. This brings us to Shadow Moon Destroyer's Drape. Now, this is between your Warriors, Enhancers, and Rogues. Rep Paladins can use this, but it is a hit item. It's not especially huge, even if you can use the hit. So, ultimately, it's between three. Across the board, though, it is relatively small. And then there's this cloak called Cloak of Fiends in Phase 4, which is super, super close in value to this, within, like, one or two DPS. So, as such, it's a little situational, but if you're Rogue is still rocking Drape of the Dark Reavers and hasn't got Thalassian Wilder Cloak from Kael Thass, I'd actually pry the Rogue here first. Please hear me out here. That's a caveat. That's not the rule. I wouldn't put Rogues at, at uh, first prio if they have Thalassian Wilder Cloak. That doesn't make sense. But if they don't have Thalassian Wilder Cloak, for example, my guild have seen, I think, one. I didn't go to a Rogue. I think went to one Hunter. So we got bunch of hunters, a rogue, ferals, no wilder cloak. So the rogue in that situation I would be quite high on for this, this cloak. But other than that, besides the rogue without Thilassian wilder cloak, you're basically looking at your enhancers and your warriors. Equal prior, it's not massive, it's relatively small. As I mentioned, cloak of fiends in phase four is super close to this, so don't pull your hair out here. It's it, This one is one of those ones where it's hyped up a little bit more than the reality. The reality is actually quite a calm situation. Don't worry about it. Cowl of Benevolence. Main spec over off spec. It's solid, but anyone can take it, really. Robe of the Shadow Council. Main spec over off spec. Probably DE. Insidious Blands. Now, these are an interesting one. Basically, there's loads of good leather braces. This is one of many, but these are... But these are abyss for rogues and hunters. Now hunters have a awkward hit situation, so I would go there first. It's not massive, there's not going to be crazy crazy bad situations if you don't give this to, you know, out fairly because there are quite a lot of leather options at this stage of the game um, in the brace slot. So don't stress too much about it, but it would definitely be best on your hunters first just because of the fact that their hit situation is a bit wonky. So, happy days. Botanist Gloves of Growth. Now, these are the gloves I was talking about. Now, this is where you might disagree with me if you're if you're a Rest of Druid or Rest of Shaman. Actually, no, Rest of Druids will agree with me because I'm being a bit favourable to them here. Rest of Shamans might raise an eyebrow. I, I also think I'm being generous, but I think it's kind of fair. So, it's best for Rest of Druids and Shamans. And I'm a big fan of slow rolling Rest of Druids on the haste items. But this is just strictly the best option from a bonus healing perspective as well. Even if you ignored the haste, 
These have the highest possible healing you can get on gloves or Resto Druids. So whilst the numbers definitely say Resto Shaman Pryo, I'd kind of make it equal here. You're probably running one Resto Druid, so it wouldn't hurt to slow roll a tiny bit on the Resto Shaman gloves here. Um, so I would say equal Pryo, more so for fairness than math. It's definitely not a math situation. Math situation would shove these on all the Resto Shamans first because haste is hot for Resto Shamans. Kind of it. So yeah, I'm being generous here, but I think it's I think it's okay. It's one of those ones where you can safely uh, go for player happiness over extreme min max, unless of course your guild is all extreme min max, in which case shove it on your rest of shards. All right, next we've got soft step boots of tracking. Now these are pretty good options for the male users whilst they wait for shadow master boots. And whilst these are worse, the leather options are just lacking across the board. Um, as a small spoiler for Shadow Master boots. So you're probably going to prior them, the male users lower on Shadow Masters because there's just so many good male options. So whilst I'm not 100% certain in terms of sims because I haven't done like a million sims for every single spec but I think these are slightly closer to Shadow Master boots for enhances than they are for hunters. I don't think it's worth prioring based on that, but it's just a small note. I think it's slightly, slightly better for Enhanced than Hunters. But either way, it's more a case of you want to give these out to your Hunters Enhanced because Shadow Master Boots are quite quite contested and Leather users in particular really struggle. They, they've what, Edge Walkers into Shadow Masters. That's basically the boot progression for Leather users. So just keep it in mind. Corners of Enforcement. These are Prop Warrior Abyss. They've got that very special E word, expertise, of course, and they're chonky. That's pretty much Prop Warrior in a nutshell. Expertise, hit rating, and chonk. Happy days. Next, we have Girdle of Lordarian's Fallen. Not bad, but Holy Paladins prefer Girdle of Hope as they aren't haste fiends like the other healers. Totem of Ancestral Grace, or Guidance, sorry. Strict upgrade for elementals. Shove it on them. Go, go, go. Soul Cleaver, solid, pretty good two-hander for Rep Paladins, and I guess Arms Warriors too. Swords are ahead by some margin, but it's okay. Main spec over off spec, I wouldn't worry too much, either way. Twisted Blades of Zarak. Now this is, from what I understand, going to pure Warriors in particular, but which is maybe obvious to some degree. Um, rogues still prefer the Arcanite Steam Pistol. But Warriors prefer Serpent Spine Longbow, which this is roughly or well, basically equivalent to, or slightly, bit, ever so slightly better than, but it lacks the stamina. And if you're a melee boy, you know, stamina's pretty handy. You know, getting cleaved by trash and stuff, it's pretty good. So, whilst Fury Warriors, Arms Warriors will prefer Serpent Spine Longbow, this is a great option if they don't have it. Wife of the Stoic Guardian, it's fine on Prop Warriors, but. As we saw, Legion Killer is their go-to. Now this brings us to Mother Shiraz and Leggings of Devastation. These are nice legs, not really up to channeled elements level, but they are still a strong option while the caster waits for these. Warlocks and Elemental Shamans like their tier 6 legs similarly or slightly better than this depending on setup, whilst mages use their tier 6 legs, at least in the case of Arcane. As such, these don't really warrant a strict prio, but there are a couple things to consider. First, these can be used to respond to where you're getting least fortunate with tier 6 leg tokens amongst your spellcasters. Because if they like tier 6 but they don't drop, then... Well, put it this way, sorry. In a lot of cases, tier 6 legs are not absolute bis, because channel channeled elements are. But if you don't get tokens that feed that potential to use tier 6, then these are the next best options. So ultimately, you can kind of use as a responsive item, if that makes sense. Between channel elements and tier 6 leg tokens, this is kind of like that item that's pretty damn good, but it's got hit rating. We're trying to dodge hit rating this phase. Uh, but it kind of fits that gap where you've been least lucky. Next, we have Shadow Master's boots. Now, as mentioned on the tracking boots, whatever they were called, we're leaning towards leather DPS classes here for fairness, simply, because... Basically, there's a shit ton of good male options and plate options in the case of rep, uh, rep paladins. But basically, the leather boys 
have been stuck with Edgewalkers up till now, which, whilst fantastic, are ultimately a Karazhan item level item. That's too many items. But anyway, I would emphasize that this is a soft priority, not super strict, because these boots are great. They are really good. But to keep positive vibes amongst your raid team, I would favor rogues and your feral DPS slash off tank. Now, there just isn't enough options. That's basically why we're pushing these up, not from a numbers perspective. I do want to note though, if your feral off tank is not very aggressive, likes to play it a bit safer, you can move them down because this is purely a DPS item essentially. So you, you want to be playing in a way that sort of utilizes the DPS as opposed to, for example, if you know Feral Druid as well, some off tanks might be a bit concerned that the main tank might die, at least on progression as well. Um, and they might be wearing PvP boots to have resilience for uh, to avoid crit, crits from the bosses if they do have to pick them up, or, or when they do pick them up rather. So use your judgment there. That's definitely one with those little asterisks. Because if you're not playing aggressively as the Feral off tank, these are only for mono cats, really. It's aggressive, or not aggressive, but you know, DPS orientated feral off tanks and mono cats are where these are going to go. Um, not main tanks, not super safe off tanks. Just a quick note. I only say that because I know feral druid gearing a lot better than I know other specs, obviously. Anyway, before I ramble about feral, following this, you have your hunters and rets that are after these boots. Whilst I understand that rets do have a hit issue a lot of the time, I do think it's correct to lean into hunters over rets simply because dread boots exist and dread boots are going to solve the cursed vision problem in the early weeks at least. I'm not saying don't give your rep paladins cursed vision. What I'm saying is by slow rolling cursed visions a little bit, you do get to utilize dread boots that get freed up because I don't know how many warriors you're running, but I, unless you're a really, really sort of speed running guild, you probably don't have that many DPS warriors. So, and they also have Cobra Lash, sorry, from phase two, which are pretty damn good if you don't want hit. So either way, it kind of like leans into that sort of rogue equals feral monocat slash off tank. Then you've got your survival and your BM, and then you've got your ret on these last. Now that's not a slight to ret, it's just a very highly contested item, and they've got a lot of options, shit ton of options. You'll be glad to know, Rep Paladins, that the game just kicked me out after giving that Shadow Master's boots take, so maybe that's the sign. Either way, we're going to move on. Heart Shatter Breastplate, main spec over off spec, probably DE. Now, the dreaded NPOP, that's the acronym I was using uh, when I was doing lots of notes and doing uh, spreadsheets to compare stuff. So NPOP, Medina's Pendant of Purity. It goes without saying that this is slightly better than Lord Sanguinar's Charm from Kael'thas for all healers besides Druids. However, I think it's pretty safe to go for Holy Paladin first. As mentioned, they are actually actively interested in spell crit, at least currently, and the other healers are looking at haste more aggressively, and in phase four there is a haste healing neck, which they're going to drop this for most likely anyway. So, Holy Paladin prior for longevity reasons, not performance reasons, longevity reasons. Other than that, you can then go to your Holy Priest, and then your rest of Shaman and your rest of Druid. It's very loose prior. The only ones that aren't that keen on it are Druids. Holy Paladins are very keen on this. And then you've got rest of Shaman and Holy Priest who are going to replace this in Phase 4 most definitely. Next we have Tome of the Lightbringer. DE, I believe, pretty sure. Blade of Savagery is the human prot warrior weapon of choice. It's also a good offhand for your rogues. Now if you have a human prot warrior, they're probably your main tank. Probably best to put it there to help out their threat. The 1.4 speed is pretty nice, as long as they're getting hit hard enough, as far as I can tell. Basically, big rage, fast speed equals good. That, that's the simple sort of explanation I picked up. And essentially, if you don't have a human prop warrior in your raid team, this is a rogue offhand, basically, whilst they wait for the inevitable desire for glaives. Next, we have the shoulder tokens. Now, these are a little bit spicy, so we'll go through a little bit slower than the other T6 tokens. So, similar to before on the Conqueror token, we're keen to get our prop paladin rolling with the four piece. It's just so good, as I've mentioned, I won't bore you to death. 
Whilst the same can be said of our Warlocks, of course. Our Warlocks are going to pump real hard with 4-piece, and ultimately, this is part of that 4-piece. As mentioned, Holy Priests utilize Tier 5 a bit too well to give them a good prior here. Again, sorry Holy Priests. And Shadow and Holy Paladin sort of are ahead of them because they're in that middle bracket. They use them well, they want the 4-piece. It's not incredibly crazy. You might even want to lean towards your Holy Paladin slightly here just because their bonus is a little bit more enticing. Um, at least in their eyes, I want to say. A lot of raid groups only look at DPS, right? They don't really care about healing. But in terms of like the, the impression I got from the class spec Discord itself, or channel rather, I should say, this is viewed more highly than the Shadow Priest bonus is viewed in the Shadow channel, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, just a slight thing there. Then you've got your Holy Priests, of course, that I mentioned, and then Rep finally, because they don't use it unless they just want to look cool. Next, you've got the Protector Token. Now, this one is perhaps the one with the most to talk about, um, because we have Enhancers who do not want this, but every single other spec here views it as their abyss. Besides Enhance, everybody wants this real bad. So again, it goes without saying, because of how contested this is, this is a very loose prior. Remember, we're getting two tokens per boss, so it's not too bad. Like, you don't have to be too strict here. But if we are nitpicking, if we are trying to find differences, you're looking at your BM and your Fury first, most likely, because the four-piece setup is really good, obviously, on Hunter, or rather, the four-piece bonus is really good on your Hunters. And then, if you are going for your four piece on Fury Warrior, it's even more compelling to put this on your Fury Warriors early. That's just how the numbers work out. Because it's so contested, it's hard to not just go with the numbers. There's not really any other mitigating factors per se. There's not many other options in the shoulder slot for most of these specs. So, just one of those things. Then it is clear that your Ellies and your Restos, Resto Shamans that is, get a nice bonus. We like these bonuses. Again, people do sort of neglect the healer aspects, but both of these get pretty substantial bonuses, or pretty good bonuses rather, that are just good. Like, they're just good enough to put them ahead of the other specs that remain, which are your prop warriors and your enhance. Now, prop warriors are up in arms right now. I already know this, because I'm putting them you know, below a healer, below a utility spec. Now, don't get me wrong. If you have a prop warrior, they're probably your main tank. And it is fair if, or rather, it's an okay sort of uh, goal or objective or, or sort of, I don't know, approach to gear your main tank early. You want to alleviate healing pressure and, and, you know, make stuff easier and stuff like that. But the way classic servers are sort of set up, it's, it's kind of debatable um, given how little prop warrior DPS and TPS scales that you're not really looking for more chonk. The bosses don't really threaten you too much. It's not like a light, like it's not really that extreme, at least not in phase two or phase three. So realistic, or actually Morrigan was kind of rough at times, but for prop warriors, you're going to live in tier five regardless. You're not going to gain much threat or much DPS from tier six. So I'm pretty low here. But as I mentioned, if you like to gear your main tank up, because of that kind of like sort of uh, I don't want to call it a tradition almost I guess at this point fine it's not a bad option but me personally I'm putting them low only ahead of enhance who don't use tier six shoulders sorry prop warriors next we have the vanquish token this is very similar and a lot simpler so ferals all kinds of ferals first then your rogues, also your fire mages, because fire mages want four piece. The only slot they don't use is the helm. So again, you've got rogues and fire mage in that second spot, duking it out. You might not have a fire mage, so the rogue is very happy. But if you do, put them in that sort of bracket. Then you've got your balance druid and your rest of druid. Now again, it it's nitpicking at the end of the day. The reason why I would go balance first here is purely because rest of druids can use or, or if they are aiming towards the five gcd set eventually they can craft these leatherworking bind on pickup brace uh, shoulders 
that are pretty good. Now, that is not to say, obviously, they might not be leather working. So, you know, question mark. Context matters. It's a tough one. But basically, I've put here a sort of a rough idea. Balance Druid is greater than or equal to Rest of Druid. It really sort of depends. Okay, Mage at the bottom because they just don't use them. So I hope that makes sense to the rest of the I'm trying to keep it brief and not bore you with like lots of details. And I know that can be confusing when you're trying to skip over stuff quickly. But essentially, it's close between balance and resto. The the, the downside to, to balance is that the gains are relatively small compared to 4-piece tier 5. And they can't equip 4-piece tier 6 until 4-piece tier 5. Or sorry, they can't, you can't replace 4-piece tier, tier 5 with tier 6 until they have the 4-piece, as far as I'm aware. So realistically, there is that sort of, eh, it's okay, it's good, but it's not that great, uh, in the short term at least, for balance. So then Rest of Druid has a, a, a good good claim, even though they are only a healer, to, to, to quote some of the rhetoric that I sometimes hear. Anyway, we're now moving on. The Illidari Council. Cloak of the Illidari Council. What a fitting name. Well, this is basically the Biss Spellcaster Cloak, because... You've already heard me say it. I'm not going to give, I'm not going to recommend rather. I'm not going to recommend Shroud of the Highborn, go to your DPSs, unless you're in an exceptionally hardcore guild, like super speedrunner guild. Like, unless you're really into that, like really, really, not, not dabbling in it. I mean, really going for it. It's not worth. It's marginal. So with that, with that out the way, you're basically looking at this as your Biss Cloak. Now the main detractors are that there's that Shadow Cloak that we've seen from the trash. That does push your Shadow Base Warlocks and your Shadow Priests. Well, Shadow Priests is the bottom, because they just they don't use this. They use the Nether Void Cloak. Shadow Base Warlocks still want this over the Nether Void Cloak because of the hit situation. But it's not as pressing a problem. Because they have Nether Void, it's less of an upgrade, if that makes sense. So you're going to be prioritizing the other casters here. Now you might ask, well, okay, how do we differentiate between the other casters? Now, sorry to be, make a really sort of simple simple uh, mention, but just don't. Don't differentiate because the main reason why I'm not very not recommending Shroud of the Highborn to DPS classes is because Phase 4, again, will be a little while, of course, but Phase 4 brings a 10-man loot table with a bunch of haste items. One of those haste items is a spell damage haste cloak that is going to be better. So you just use that in phase 4. You use this for now, then in phase 4 you go to your 10 mans, you get your haste cloak. Happy days. So no one should be too upset about this because in a month or two, maybe three at a push, you know, phase 4 is going to come along. I can't see them delaying it too much. Phase 4 comes out, Bob's your uncle, you get your haste cloak, this gets put in the bin as it were, for all the casters that aren't Shadow Boys. Well, in fact, Shadow Waste Warlocks too. So everyone but Shadow Priest, I believe, does that. They bin this off, they get the Haze Cloak, so don't stress here. Just don't give it to your Shadow Boys first. Anyone but the Shadow Boys first. Simple. Belt of Divine Guidance. Now, I would put this Rest of Druid prior here. As mentioned, I'm a big fan of going for the full GCD setup first. So I'd put it there. Now, if they are tailoring... It's not super worth because Primal Mooncloth Belt is super good still, somehow. Um, priests prefer the Haste Belt, but they might want this. Especially if they're not Circle of Healing, they might want this. So do keep that in mind. If you've just got like a, what's it called? A Divine Spirit Priest, then sure, this is equal or maybe even higher prior than the rest of Druids. But generally speaking, rest of Druid is probably your best early uh, candidate here. Because they can use it for longer if you're slow rolling the 5 GCD setup. And it's just good. But ultimately, it's not a massive deal. This belt is not a highly contested crazy item. It's good, really good. But ultimately, there are different needs and desires from the healers across the board. Restadria just happens to be the best early candidate without any more context. If it's more context, you can make a better decision. But from this purpose of this video, Restadria moving on. Veil of Turning Leaves. Solid, but unspectacular. Main spec over off spec, slash DE. Forest Prowler's Helm. Now, this is the best route for your Cursed Visionless 
enhanced shamans. If they don't have cursed visions, chuck this on them. It's serviceable until cursed visions. This can also be decent for rets and BMs that are waiting for cursed vision as well. Rets have Illidari, Helm of the Illidari Shatterer in just a moment, which is roughly in the same, like slightly ahead or equal to this, as far as I'm aware, in that sort of second best option slot before they get cursed vision. So again, it doesn't really matter too much. As mentioned, BMs can use this tier six is a bit better. So ultimately, it's a bit of a stopgap. Use your nuance here, use the context, but on a very, very loose sense without the context, enhanced, then rep, then BM. Next, Helm of the Idolara Shatterer. As mentioned, this is a pretty good option for both warriors and rets that are in the Cursed Visions waiting room. In particular, warriors can use tier 6 ahead of this, so I do lean towards um, rets ever so slightly here. Really, it's more of a context decision. But ultimately, and, and it does relate to your Curse Vision decision. Let me put that out there. It definitely relates to your Curse Vision decision. But assuming we don't know what that is yet, or rather I don't know what this that your decision on that is, Rets first, ever so slightly here. Neither of them really want it, though, if that makes sense. Again, it's one of those ones where you get it and you're like, ah, oh, this probably means Curse Vision isn't happening this week. And that's like, you know, that's human nature. But it's a good option. Now, Madness the Betrayer. This has got more hype than it deserves, really, if I'm being honest. Um, that's not to say it's bad, don't get me wrong. It is the best situation, or the best trinket for many this phase. Um, but let's start with who doesn't want it. Retribution Paladins and Rogues do not want this. They just don't. They prefer Rogues prefer Warp Spring Coil, as far as the Simonized Sheet is concerned, and Rets are looking to Brooch and or Mark of the Champion, or even Abacus of Violent Odds over this, as far as I can tell. So, this leaves us with DPS Warriors, Hunters, Ferals, and Enhance. Um, the latter two specs gain a lot less. Enhance and Feral are not gaining as much as your Warriors and Hunters. So they are naturally towards the bottom prior. They're in that sort of, if we get a bunch of them, they can get it kind of territory. Because they're not going to hold on to it too long. And in Phase 4, the gap is even tinier. So... Warriors and Hunters, um, between them, um, those four specs that is, I do want to emphasize, I'm including survival, I'm including arms, I would in this specific case differentiate. I would go Fury and Beastmaster because of the numbers basically, um, ahead of arms and survival. It's one of the rare cases where I think numbers are the only way to differentiate between, like realistically, even if you're trying to be generous or kind or, or or um, altruistic, whatever adjective you want to throw. Um, Fury and BM first. It just it, it just makes the most sense if you actually care about class context. Then there's arms and survival in a kind of 1B situation. They're very good candidates, but not really quite the same. Then you've got your enhanced and ferals. I'm not sure which is the best. If you've got an actual good mono cap or a very aggressive feral off tank, I'd be sort of equal prio with the enhanced. If you've got a very safe feral off tank, no, no chance. I don't think. I think they're very much behind the enhance. But either way, it's fine margins. The main point is warriors and hunters first. Fury and BM make the most sense first, but you can decide that little nitpick. Next, we have the leg tokens. For the for the conqueror token, it will feel like deja vu. This follows the exact same recipe we discussed before. Prop Palas use legs as absolute bis, and Warlocks typically view these as bis, assuming that you prioed the vestments of the Sea Witch, as I recommended last time round. Holy Paladins are next, because Shadow prefers leggings of channeled elements, which we have given a good prior on for them, and so Holy Palas and Holy Priests are bumped up because of that sort of aspect, where we've given Shadow a nice item, or priored them highly on a nice item, and that moves them towards the bottom with Rhett, because ultimately, it's not Bis for Shadow. We're going to prior them on their Bis option, or Bis option, quite well. Or rather, their top prior with the Boomkins, if you follow what my recommendation is, for general happiness and smartness, I guess. Um, so yeah, to summarise, Prop Pala, then Warlocks that have Vestments, Holy Pala, Holy Priest, then Rhett and Shadow. 
Next up, Protector. This token is a pretty easy one as not many specs use legs in this category. Survi survival moves from its typical spot of near the top to the bottom because they're using bow stitch leggings for that juicy, juicy, agi triple socket goodness. This naturally means you've got BM Hunter on an island by themselves. They're looking for cursed vision, but you still want to give them four piece, so therefore you put the legs on them. It's that simple. Then you've got Ellie and Resto, who are kind of in that similar range. The thing I want to point out is Resto Shaman should be a little bit ahead because it's their absolute this. They're using botanist gloves and four piece. Elementals, if they can help it, would rather use channeled elements. It's kind of close, but they would rather a different option. So, Resto Shaman comes after your BM Hunter slightly ahead of your elemental and following your elemental shaman you have a bunch of specs that don't really care for the legs that is prop warrior dps warriors and survival hunters so really really easy token here bm rest of shaman ellie shaman the others don't really care too much finally with the vanquisher token and basically it's going to follow a very very similar recipe the main thing to point out rest of druids do not use tier six legs as part of their best or second best setup. So you really don't give a shit about them here. So that leaves us with Feral first, then Rogue and Fire, followed by Arcane, because they do use it, not for a four piece, that's why they're a little bit lower than Fire and Rogue, but they do use it. So they're actually in a good spot and they are in the same sort of category as Balance Druid because Balance Druid gets a decent upgrade if they have four piece tier six over their four piece tier five. They need all four pieces and that's kind of like the detracting point that brings them in line with Arcane, who are using this as a single piece, which is a rarity for the legs token. Either way, summary, Feral, Rogue Fire, Arcane Balance, then Residuid. Happy days. All right, now we're on to Illidan loot. And yeah, it's going to be a, a long segment on this loot. So first and foremost, Shroud of the Highborn, as I've alluded to, I don't believe in this going to, sh to DPSs. It, it doesn't make too much sense to me. It's marginal because they're giving up quite a lot of spell power to gain the haste. So whilst the haste is juicy AF, the spell damage kind of isn't. So realistically, the gains are relatively small. In phase four, there's a very clear haste spell damage upgrade to this. So therefore, we're ignoring DPS. It's that simple, really. I don't want to get your hopes up DPS, I'm sorry. It's just, unless you're super hardcore, like literally the most hardcore, it doesn't make too much sense. Now I've got that out of the way, let's talk about healers. Holy Paladins are okay missing out on this. They prefer healing power, spell crit, MP5. They're not the massive fan of haste like other healers are. So they're happy to take a full pass on this and be bottom prior. Likewise, I've committed to Residuids utilising a full GCD setup. I know Residuids want that 5 GCD setup. I'm not denying it. I just mean in the early stages when this is the most relevant, this advice is the most relevant, I would move them lower just because it is what it is. The haste rating is really, really valuable on Chain Hill and Circle of Healing. So, naturally, you've got Rest of Shamans and Holy Priests near the top. I am a little bit more keen on Rest of Shamans here just because the haste per point value is a tiny bit better on, on Rest of Shamans. Like the, the cast time of Chain here is the main cuckold really for that entire like spec. It's a fantastic spec. The more haste they get, it just, it, it's a far greater impact. Like They start gemming haste when it's available, put it that way. Haste is really, really good for Chain Hill's band. So I'm a little bit higher on Rest of Shaman but it's uh, very close. You could easily go Holy Priest first here too, and that would be fine. Again, even Rest of Druid first is not wild. It's just that I think in the bigger picture of what I've so far suggested, it doesn't make much sense. But you could be of the opinion that Rest of Druid should get a 5 GCD set immediately. If that's the case, go for it. But for me, not so much. Cowl of the Illidari High Lord. Now, this is... 
basically fire mage bis and everything and for everybody else it's just solid it's good it's a good little stop gap but for fire mage it's bis so go fire mage happy days good lord my body is ready for the comments on this one so the thing that stands out the most on this item compared to the rest of the invitamization available this phase for each melee spec is that the enhancement charm and gain is just greater than the rest by a pretty decent margin. Their alternatives suck balls, to be really, really brutally honest. So, naturally, I'm putting in hearts first. And, and from what I've seen, this is quite a universal opinion. Even those that have a vested interest in Cursed Vision are quite happy to say enhanced deserve it the most. I think that is just correct. And I think it's one of those ones where, whilst this is a super desirable, super sort of, you know, hyped up item where you want to give it to your you know, your most reliable people, your biggest pumpers, etc. Unless your enhanced shaman is like a complete bozo or you know, is unreliable or whatever. That sounds like a horrible way to say it, but ultimately enhanced have a really good case here. I'd go with them first. This is one of those ones where I don't think it's a soft prio. I think anything but enhanced first is wrong. Like in terms of just class. No, don't quote me on that for everybody. Like your enhanced shaman could be unreliable. That's fine, but assuming everything is equal, the enhancement case too strong in my opinion. Now, following this though, it's a bit tricky, and I'm going to do my best to explain myself clearly. But I know a certain spec will blow me up in the comments. I'm ready for it. I'm honest. I'm ready for it. But I'll try and explain myself as best I can. So. First and foremost, that sticks out, BM Hunters have a tricky hit situation once they're mostly phase 3'd up. Now that's the key term, once they are mostly phase 3'd up. They do have pretty good prios on a lot of items, right? They're big pumpers, valuable spec in terms of just raw performance. But that won't happen overnight, right? Even if you're trying to stack BM Hunters consciously, there are multiple situations where several bm hunters don't get fed quickly or and, and curse vision drops early or you know you get multiple curse visions early and the bm hunter situation is a little bit sketchy to try and shove this on them right away to be utilized right away um but at the same time like i said you really do want this on them to help their gear situation out with the four piece so it's a bit of a conundrum and then alongside that, you've got your Fury Warriors who will ascend to great heights from now through to the end of the game. Like, or through the end of the expansion, I should say. It's it's a pretty compelling case, even though it might not be uh, popular um, with some people. Because Fury Warrior just it scales incredibly well. We know this. We're, we all know how this game works. Warriors scale insanely. In particular, Fury Warriors almost every single expansion. Now, in terms of where that leaves you with the BM Fury Warrior thing is that I feel like if you get very, very lucky with Curse Visions, Fury Warrior is actually slightly ahead. So, for example, weeks one and week two, you get Curse Vision twice. First one goes to an Enhanced Shaman. Second one, you don't have another Enhanced Shaman. So you're looking around, you're like, ah, but the BM Hunters doesn't have four piece yet. Your warriors can always use this. They can pump without a four piece. Their best setup is not four piece. So it's one of those sort of like contextual ones, but I have them on equal prio because it relates to context. So I'll explain in a summary at the end, but ultimately if you get super lucky, super early, Fury Warrior is actually slightly better early than BM. But if you get like a sort of well spaced out Curse Vision sort of timetable if you will by RNG Jesus then um yeah Fury Warrior should be a little bit below BM Hunter at least in my view but again it, it's very fine margins and it, it, it's difficult put it that way and this then leads us to Rhett and Rogues now at this point in time I know the Retribution Paladins are mad at me and that's okay because we will see things a bit differently and I am fully aware fully aware this is perhaps the most desirable item besides the weapon upgrade for Rep Paladins. 
uh, at least it's the most desirable contested item for Red Paladins in this phase. And and that's like great in terms of clearly it's a good upgrade for you. You definitely should be above rogues, that's for sure. Um, but it's a bit tricky in terms of Dread Boots of the Legion kind of have that compelling aspect of it's a very good item. It has hit on it, so it's a bit awkward. But it also helps out the Shadow Master Boot situation and the Curse Vision situation by putting Dread Boots on Rep Paladins after the DPS Warriors and sort of like, you know, alleviating that pressure. It's basically Rep Paladins don't have a bad case for a lot of these items. They're just in a bit of an awkward spot. Um, on these contested items it's not so much that it's their fault more case of like ah, they have so many options it's almost unfair to be super generous this phase i hope that's coming across correctly i'm really not trying to like do my brett pally's dirty i pretty much praised you and gave you everything in phase two so just 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 just, uh, just so you know but um yeah ultimately though apologies rogues you're definitely dead last on this. And, and to be honest, if I was a rogue, and I think you probably feel the same, if you are a rogue, that is, you care about the orange boys. Like, sure, Curse Vision's great. And you're going to get it eventually, probably. But who cares if you've got orange boys? So the, the, the sort of like overall picture does put rogue definitely last on this. Um, that's about it, really. Like, it's very close. We're talking about very fine margins. So yeah, moving on swiftly. This is the helm that I was talking about with Prop Warriors relating to the Tier 6 helm token. It's just not contested. It's all yours. It's great. It's fantastic. Go for it. Happy days. And unfortunately, this brings us straight on to a very contested item, Storm Ray Signet Ring. And it's basically the best option for all physical damage dealing specs, just across the board. Now, in terms of who is best suited for this ring early on? Um, it's one of it's it's a, it's a weird one again. Unfortunately for some of you who don't play warrior, I'm quite high on warriors here again. I promise you, I don't play warrior anymore at all. Um, but it's just one of those things where it makes the most sense, um, even though it is fantastic for everybody. Um, the, the specs is less fantastic for are your rep paladins and enhancement shamans. The, the armor pen just isn't as valuable. And naturally that means that the overall ring is just not quite as valuable. Um, in terms of obviously numbers wise, you are looking at your warriors hunters first. They do the most damage of the specs we've discussed as long as they're played well. So realistically, this is one of the ones where you're gonna put your warriors first, put your hunters after that. Um, and then you're gonna think about, you know, your ferals, enhanced rets. It's definitely like a two-tiered kind of system. Oh, rogues too. Rogues are in that second tier. And the reason that is, is because Ring of the Seatful Intent exists. Enhanced Shamans and um, Enhanced Shamans and Rogues can use Ring of the Seatful Intent very well alongside, you know, the, the Rep Ring or or uh, un the Unstoppable Aggressors Ring. So they have those options uh, and the gap is just a little bit smaller. Whereas Ring of the Seatful Intent doesn't really tickle Warriors. It's okay for for um, hunters, but just not in that same ballpark. And of course, you didn't have the numerical disparity. So I, I don't have a particularly strict prior here. And again, because it's so contested, it's a soft prior. I'm definitely advocating a soft prior because players matter. Who it is matters. But from a class perspective, it's definitely a two-tier system. Hunters and warriors are definitely the best candidates. It, it, it sucks that it, it sometimes comes down to that with the pumpage. But it is the truth. Then you got, you know, rogues, enhanced ret and feral. Feral's probably towards the bottom here, but if they've got a, if they're really good at it, if they're really good at being a monocap, there's no harm either there, because they will use it in phase four too. So overall, it's that two tiered system. Go with the most reliable, good player, you know, all that stuff. More so than class. But if you had to use class as like a tiebreaker or something. Hunters and Warriors are, are the go-to, I think. Next, we've got Skull of Gul'dan. Now, this is the one item where I'm not even going to offer a recommendation. And I'm using this as my single discretionary get out of jail card every phase. I did it once with Verdant Sphere in phase two. I don't know why I did it on phase one. I don't think I did anything in phase one. But phase two, I used it on Verdant Sphere because CBA, and it's so close for a lot of people. Um, I did add some notes, though, on Verdant Sphere, um, and I'm going to do the same here. 
I'm going to try and help, but I don't have a recommendation for you. That might seem like I'm giving a recommendation without saying I am, but the truth is I'm just trying to help you make the best decision, but I'm not confident or I don't have enough conviction on this one. Put it that way. Not, not as much conviction on Skull to really give a recommendation. So, what do I actually have to say about it? First, if you really care about numbers, especially speed running, as in the whole raid rather than you know, passing bosses, I mean, trying to get the entire instance cleared as fast as possible, Warlocks really stand out on this one. Sure, we don't want too much spell hit these days, but haste and cedar corruption, pretty good on trash. Pretty fucking amazing on trash. Not to mention that it's just good in general for, you know, casting shadow bolts on bosses. But it really, because Warlocks are so versatile, and it all relates to haste. All of their damage relates to haste, um, in terms of the destruction Warlocks at least. You're really looking at them going, sure, they're the best numerical option in theory. There are some notable specs that gain a little less also that I would like to point out. Not because I think they can't be the first person to get Skull, far from it. But it is important to consider it, at the very least. Um, and that might help you if it's a really close decision between two players for, for your guild or, or raid team. Um, in particular, I'm talking about the Ashtung Exalted Trinkets for Mage and Balanced Druid. They do a pretty good job of being a stopgap until Skull of Gul'dan. And whilst the same is not really true for the other casters, at least not to the same extent. So really what I'm saying is, Mages and Boomkins get a little bit more options. A little bit more versatility to add into that that arsenal because we all know if you're really trying to push the limit a little bit and you're trying to do as best as you can you're probably fiddling with your trinkets right quite a lot between trash packs between you know if it's on cooldown blah 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 yeah you're fiddling right you're fiddling ash tongue trinkets are a nice option for mazes and boomkins but not as much so for the other casters so that might be a little slight knock on those two specs but, as I mentioned, I'm sticking to my guns here. I don't have a particularly good, particularly strong conviction on this one. This item is a batshit crazy outlier and probably shouldn't exist, but it does. So everybody wants it. Good luck. Next up, we have a weird one. So, in theory, it's amazing. But the reality is that fights don't push healers' mana to the degree that warrants this secondary effect. Obviously, the passive healing is fantastic. It's the highest passive healing we've had yet on, on, a, on a trinket. However, pretty much all healers, mathematically at least, and out of context, prefer Dire Brew Hops and Essence of the Martyr. Dire Brew Hops is the um, Brewfest equivalent of Essence of the Martyr, because you can run both, and you can pop both at the same time if you really need to pump. So basically, if you activate them on, on cooldown, it averages out slightly ahead of Memento, uh, assuming the mana isn't as relevant, which at the moment especially it typically isn't and is unlikely to be. Um, I'm not sure, I don't want to make any bold claims, but I'm not sure how relevant that mana is going to be at any stage of TBC Classic. Um, it is definitely very useful for trying to make things more efficient, like between packs. Like on a boss fight, you're probably using Essence and Dive Brew Hops, mathematically speaking, but between trash packs, you, know, you want to keep your mana topped, it's a good trinket to swap in. A bit like I was saying with the skull, you know, like you need options. This is a great option, but an option doesn't really warrant a class prio. So what I would do here, and I know this is a little bit of a cop out, but it's generally the truth. Like it's not particularly strongly felt for a lot of these healer communities. Some people have it on their bisque list. Some people don't. Some people don't even. They just say like, ah, it's good, good option. Other people will say, ah, it is the be best trinket because in. I guess it kind of is if you're being lazy. If you're not pushing that button um, to activate Die Brew Hops, then this is this is better, clearly. But you know where I'm going with this. Go with whoever wants it the most, honestly. Like, literally try and see who who really fancies this. If you, you know, really, really nitpicking uh, and you're looking at who should get this first if you're a speedrunner or, you know, who's going to use this the most between on, on trash packs and stuff, um, I imagine... Mana is going to get rinsed a bit quicker on your Resto Shaman and your Holy Priest. Again, <laughs> I know, I know. You know, Druids have fantastic mana management, as do Holy Paladins on average. So we're looking at, again, those two specs that do stick out a lot on haste, again, stick out here in terms of 
trying to keep their uptime high on, on trash packs. That's all I have to say on this. I, I don't feel I don't think anyone feels that strongly about this trinket. So go at least in terms of class. Just go with the person who's really desperate for this trinket, because there will be somebody in your guild or raid team rather that really wants this. There just will be. I already know which one in, in our our raid team with me with, with my guild that I know who really wants this. It's it's like been made very clear, and that's great because that's where it's going to go because that's what makes sense. Because mathematically speaking, this technically is not this. So that moves us on to tier six tokens before we get on to some weapons. And I'll try and breeze through these because pretty much all of them are desirable. Um, this token is pretty much where all the other conqueror tokens are the main difference um is the investment situation so prop pallet first they're using five out of five it's fantastic for them then you want your warlocks without vestments yeah and i should have probably mentioned this on the leg token as well if the warlock doesn't have vestments they should be decently high up on the leg token too but if for some reason you have a new warlock or you didn't get lucky with vestments and one warlock doesn't have vestments you're gonna go warlock that doesn't have vestments after the holy pallet. Then uh, after the sorry after the prop pallet. Then you've got your shadow priests and holy paladins because they like their four piece. They use it as soon as they can get it, um, but don't get the same mileage from tier five as holy priest does. Again, I'm really sorry, holy priests. It's not your fault. It's the set bonus's fault. And then you've got warlocks with vestments because they might want it for I don't know reasons. And you've got Rhett, who probably won't use tier 6 at any point in time. So, yeah, nice and simple, that one. Protect token. Everyone bar Enhancement Shamans wants this as this. So it's going to be tricky, and as far as class goes, it's fine margins, as most of this token has nice bonuses. Naturally, it's very tempting, again, to put DPS Warriors and Hunters at the front, because they pump hard, and sometimes it unfortunately can be that simple, as I've mentioned. When we're looking at highly contested items on a cast class context only. Then you have both shaman casters as are strong options given that their bonuses are really really nice as you can see. And I again am low on the prop warrior. I've talked about it already, I don't want to bore you to death. If you like the main tank priority thing, go for it. It's your prop warrior probably is your main tank. But ultimately the gains just aren't there if we're really being serious. Um, other than that it's pretty straightforward. So to summarize this token, Fury Warrior, Arms Warrior, BM Hunter and Survival Hunter in that top bracket. Then you've got your Ellie and Rest of Shaman. Then you've got your Prop Warriors. Then you've got your Enhance who just won't use this. Next we've got the Vanquisher token. This is very, very, very similar. You've got Feral Druid followed by Rogues and Fire Mages. And then you've got the decision between your Balanced Druid and your Resto Druid. I lean Resto here just because Balance needs all four pieces. But it doesn't matter either way. Arcane Mage at the bottom because Arcane doesn't use it. Done. Shadow Azanoth. This is basically anyone um, that wants it really. The main thing that I wanted to mention though, just as a little tidbit more so than class prior. On some private servers, this proc was busted. I don't know if that's correct. It might not be. It probably isn't, to be honest. Let's be real now. It probably isn't. Probably a weird private server thing. But in PvP, people would sometimes use this on certain private servers. And that little Ember of Azanoth bastard would slay. It would attack really fast for a relevant amount of damage. I can't remember exactly how much it was. But it was really, really obnoxious. If it still is like that, which it might be, or, or not still is, rather, if it is actually like that on live servers, look at your PvP rogues, because they might want to do a cheeky little ambush opener and hope that a little Ember of Azanoth pops out and starts smacking their target. Because that, that might be a thing. I'm not sure, though. Next up we have Crystal Spire, and uh, yeah, we're going to have fun talking about this one. I'll do my best. Uh, again, it's one of those items that is so good that it kind of, it's very, very, very fine margins. Put it that way again. Like, we're nitpicking. If you care about class context, we, we're being very ruthless here, but it doesn't really matter if that makes sense. The item is so good for all of them, all the healers, that it, it doesn't matter. But let's get into it before I start rambling. So the main thing I'm going to focus on, because of how super abyss this is, I'm going to focus on the 50% health 
uh, sort of tacked on bonus. Now, let's be real now. It is just a bonus. The baseline stats of this alone are enough for it to be the best option by a significant margin. But to try and differentiate between the healers, I think the, the bonus is the only way. That little 50% um, uptick and they're below 50% is the main way in which you can de derive who gets the most value on a class basis only. Um, so I hate to say it, but rest of druids, direct healing spells is the terminology. That means none of your hots, no ticks are, are proccing this. Only your actual initial regrowth hit or, or NS healing touch is proccing this. So whilst it is your bis and you definitely shouldn't be ignored, if we're really being serious, rest of druids have a slightly worse claim than the other healers because of this not really applying to rest of druids healing. Then we have the other three healers, and it gets a little more technical slash, I guess, nitpicky, I guess, even more so. First and foremost, first and foremost, the target in your raid group most likely to dip below 50% in terms of frequency and likelihood is your main tank. And the main main tank healer with direct healing spells is typically your holy paladin. I'd be surprised if it wasn't. Assuming you have an actual Holy Paladin. Let's, let's, let's put that little asterisk in there. So I'm quite high on Holy Paladin on this. Not because they pump the hardest. But simply because they do get juice from this little tacked on bonus. So I think they should be near the top. Now then you've got your Circle of Healing Priests. Particularly Circle of Healing Priests. And the reason why this is kind of obnoxious with them. Is because Circle of Healing is instant cast. It's just based on the GCD. So you can react quite aggressively to AoE damage on the raid that dips people below 50%, and you can immediately circle of healing, getting the proc. And if, if there's several targets below 50%, you're procking on all of them. So it's performance-wise, with that and, and likelihood of procking is not as high as the Holy Pala, but because of the way circle of healing works, you really can snipe out and really get some value from that final tactron piece of this mace. So I'm quite high on a circle of healing priests alongside Holy Paladin on this. Now, for similar reasons, Chain Heal is very good with this tactron bonus too. And I don't want to downplay that at all. The main caveat I have that makes it slightly worse than a Holy Priest circle of healing is because we already know Chain Heal is the limiting factor, the cast speed. Now, in that cast speed that's relatively slow at the moment, without all of the haste items, you're probably going to get sniped by, guess who, your Circle of Healing Priest. So they're now no longer below 50%. In that case, you know, Rest of Shamans are slightly worse for this ever, and we are talking ever so slightly. The truth is, there's also a mace in Phase 4, which is in the same ballpark as this, as Crystal Spire, for rest of shamans because they love haste that much I, i'm i'm not confident enough i haven't checked out exactly i would have to speak to the, the smart boys in the, in the rest of shaman discord whether it does actually line up but i know that it's close it's called dark blessing um from zolaman it's basically less healing but a bunch of haste and haste is the limiting factor because that chain heal cast time is dirtly as fuck so once you start stopping dirtling with your chain heal that's where the throughput really comes through for the rest of shamans. So again, it's one of those caveats where I'm higher on rest of shamans on Crystal Spy than the rest of Druids, ever so slightly, but still worth like less high than Circle of Healing Priests and Holy Paladins. If you're not a Circle of Healing Priest, I don't know what to say. You you're in that awkward spot of you're, you're a team player, but team player doesn't always get the, the juicy item first, I guess, unless they're using the team player aspect which is again what i recommend on these highly contested items focus on the non-class aspects first and then maybe use class as a tiebreaker if you say to somebody ah this new guy who's just passed his trials getting crystal spire because he's a holy paladin and he's going to proc it more versus the two-year veteran of your guild that's a resto shaman or a resto druid that's kind of bullshit it, it just is um, so yeah, take everything I've said with a pinch of salt. We are trying to find the finest of margins to differentiate. The reality is, this is Gigabis. You know your raid team. Go with who 
deserved it the most. But class-wise, that's how I'd line it up. That is Holy Paladin and Holy Priest near the top. Maybe a slight preference for Holy Paladin. Followed by Rest of Shaman, followed by Rest of Druid. Then we've got Zardoom. And uh, once again, we've got to be very cruel. Um, and it's very much a soft prior. As, as before, the player matters more here than class. If you have to do a tiebreaker on class, keep listening. If, if you're a guild that never really cares about class context, I don't know how you got to this stage of the video. So, soft prior. Very loose. However, as mentioned, fire mages and fire locks can readily drop hit rating via hellfire in case pendant. As such, they're going to be pushed on Tempest if you're if you're being super smart about this. And that will free up Zardoom a lot. So you put fiery boys at the bottom for Zardoom. It's not entirely fair, but from a guild perspective, it's a little bit better, I think. Then, unfortunately, given how well the itemization works for this phase, for Zardoom, I would place this on the higher DPS specs that remain, those being Arcane Mages and Shadow Based Warlocks. Following this, I wouldn't differentiate between Balance, Ellie or Shadow, as this is just so much better than their other options for this phase, so ultimately it just feels a bit too cruel to start nitpicking between the, I don't know, 100 DPS that maybe splits Shadow and Balance and, and Ellie. Maybe uh, Ellie's probably a little bit higher on, on the top end, but either way, um, I'm a fan of going Arcane and Shadow Locks first, and then your Balance, Ellie, Shadow Boys, then your Fire Boys, because your Fire Boys, if you're trying to min-max, if we assume everything drops at a consistent rate, which is, you know, a big assumption, you want the Tempest to be used. So, you know, if first Tempest goes prop pally, second Tempest drops, you can't have people try and duck it because they want Zardoom. Like that, it's just egregious. Tempest is so good. Put it on a Fire Boy. Yeah, put it on a Fire Boy, eases up the Zardoom, and then your Zardooms will slow trickle through, and hopefully everyone can remain happy with their with their loot situation. Um, again, it, it's tough. If if your Ellie Shaman is the most reliable, sociable, blah blah blah, all that stuff, go to the Ellie Shaman. Like you know your guild. Again, I'm trying to emphasise that th this is just on class. Other aspects do matter a lot. I'm just trying to present you the class only aspects. Next, we have some easy ones. Bulwark of Azanoth, Prop Warrior Abyss, Prop Paladins prefer the spell damage shield from Archimond for most setups, but it is a very good mitigation shield, obviously, or the best mitigation shield, obviously. So, Prop Warrior first, then Prop Pally. Looks awesome, happy days. Blackbow the Betrayer, um, this can situationally be Abyss, from what I understand, um, if mana is a problem, but generally speaking, that shouldn't be the case with you know Judgment of Wisdom, etc., um, but it might be one of those things where you just try to get it on your like most uh, aggressively min-maxing hunters. Because if you're, like, say, speed running or just trying to trim down your, your raid time in general, they might want to equip this with a quick trash transition um, to try and regain some mana and, and keep doing relevant deep damage rather than being Oom, for example. So it's not really, like, Bristle, Blux, Bristle Blitz Striker is where you want your to, to focus your attention on as a hunter, obviously, but this is... Gonna go to your hunters if they don't have bristle blitz, or even if they do, you kind of want this as an option to, to help out with some sort of some, some min maxing if they're into that. Now we're onto trash. Now we've got Netherboy Cloak we spoke about. Shadow of the Final Stand. This is arguably um Holy Pally Biss. Now is that or Shadow Forgiveness, I think it's called, the one that we were prior to Rest of Druids. That's very good for Holy Pallies too, because of just 79 healing. But I think Holy Pallies edge a little bit onto this. At least I saw a lot of lists with this. So it, it, it is what it is. It's a good cloak for healers. Holy Pallies first, I think, just because they like all of these stats somewhat. Then we've got Boots of Design Light, which we spoke about. Holy Pally, uh, Holy Priest, sorry. Holy Priest Prior. Then we've got Treads of the Den Mother. This is a very easy Feral Tank Prior. Like it's, it's their BIS option. Specifically, your main tank is going to want these. You're off tanks, looking at Shadow Master Boots, probably, unless they want to play it safe. This is where your, your main tank is going to be at, though. Rant the Storms, we know that that kind of like is a DE kind of candidate. Pillage's Gauntlet, again, doesn't compare to, to Silent Justice. Don't think too hard about it. Lightbearer, again, we've spoken about. Serrated Blaze, we've spoken about. Hellfire and Case Pendant, we spoke about. Go Fire Boys. Band of Devastation, this is a new one. 
This is the melee haste ring from Trash. Ooh, how original. All these haste rings. Um, this is Rep Pally. Like, they, it, I spoke about it before. Basically, they're the only spec that really wants it. And it's close to Biss for them to the point where it helps out the contested items a lot by just shoving on the Rep Pally and then allowing natural RNG to determine you know, the rest of the ring situation. It's just really helpful. Rep Pally's all the way. Then you've got Blessed Band of Karabor. Now, uh, I, I wasn't looking forward to this one, but I'll do my best. Um, rest of Shamans and Holy Priests, specifically Circle of Healing Priests, um, are those that get the most from haste, at least in a pure output perspective, or output increase perspective, because rest of, rest of Druids are crazy pumpers with five GCDs. The, the, the reality is, though, like, they already pump super hard as do Circle of Healing Priests, which is why I'm a little bit higher on Rest of Shamans here, just because they're really trying to get get that Chain Heal cast time low, 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 as low as they can go. Um, and that really does make a map, you'll, you'll see it, I promise you, between Phase 3 and Phase 5, where Haste just becomes more and more prominent, you can see Rest of Shamans go from pretty good to, oh damn, the Circle of Healing Priests got to be alert, otherwise Chain Heal's going to wreck shit, because that, that's just like ha how... They scale really well with haste, just to keep it simple. Um, so, I did want to point out that I am loosely, very loosely, a big fan of Rest of Shaman on this. Um, but again, all the healers by Holy Paladin want this. I do want to point out that your healers, if they are super keen to min-max and want all the haste, especially like, say, your Rest of Druid, who, you know, it's going to feel a little bit upset, maybe that, I, that, that I'm higher on four GCDs early on. Encourage them to, to try and leech from a, a Warlock or a Shadow Priest who's going to be soloing trash for the next ring we're going to talk about. So I wouldn't worry too much here because it is a trash item and can be farmed. And to be honest, if I was a Warlock or Shadow Priest trying to solo Black Temple trash for the first time, I really wouldn't mind a pocket healer. Do you know what I mean? Like, try and piggyback. Get get some value, mate. You know, like, <laughs> go, go, go do some duoing. Um, just sell it as healing makes it safer kind of stuff and I'm sure you know they don't care if, the, if a blessed band drops they'll give it to you they don't care it's only a void crystal to them so yeah if they're soloing help them out go get some blessed bands easy clap so whilst I am quite I don't know min maxi hardcore or 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 want single minded I guess single minded on this one um or all haste items really this one you can alleviate yourself by piggybacking some solo con uh, some soloing or small group content where people will be farming trash because of these rings existing. They just will. It will be a thing, especially on populated rooms. So this is the ring we were talking about. Shadow Priests and Warlocks can solo this according to the 2007 videos. So hopefully that still is the case. I'm pretty sure it will be, just because I doubt they change much, to be honest. Copy and paste. You know how it works for Blizzard. So in this case... We're going to see, you know, it's hard not to prio the specs that cannot solo. Because if you're trying to make it guild friendly, you ideally would want your Warlocks and Priests to go solo these. And then hand these out to Ellie's, Boomies, um, and, and Mages who might not be able to solo. Again, I did want to emphasize that group content of, of trash farming in Black Temple will be a thing. People will do that. They just will feel compelled because they want to have these nice juicy rings. And then there's also some like other options. Serrated Blades, great for melee melees to get involved. Um, Hammer of Judgment, again, is solid for any sort of alt, alt prop paladins that are attuned but aren't mains. So they can't get Tempest, so they won't get Hammer and all this stuff. Again, the game has DC'd me. Obviously, did not like my Ring of Ancient Knowledge comments. Um, but no, f for real. People will do trash farming a lot, so I wouldn't stress too much here. Um, and obviously, there is a point where, say for example, you have a Warlock or Priest who's been trying to solo this, and they've killed loads and loads of Black Temple trash and just got really bad luck. But then you've got like a, a super lazy, I don't know, Shaman who, who doesn't ever attempt to raid on time, all that jazz. Of course, you're not going Elemental Shaman first here, but... If all things are exactly equal, I would put it on the classes or specs first that cannot solo the trash because it's just opportunity. 
they don't have the same opportunity. Um, but with that said, I, I think this is a very, very loose comment. Uh, there's not much to add. People will trash farm. Just hope that that's enough. Then we've got Hammer of Judgment, which we've spoken about. It's just still bludgeon. No idea what this is intended to be. Guess it's okay in some cases, but yeah. You've got Illidari Rune Shield. This is basically the Paladin Shield that unfortunately they haven't been able to get the Antonidas Shield yet. Maybe your early Shaman made a compelling case and took it first. This is the shield that the Prop Pally takes whilst they're waiting for the Antonidas Shield. And that literally wraps us up. Um, again, I want to emphasize that this is only on a class context. People are people behind the keyboard, you know, like think about the wider context. You know your guild way better than I do. You know the people way better than I do, or you know them and I don't. Um, so realistically, this is just take it with a pinch of salt. Like, just take it all with a pinch of salt. I'm trying to offer as much help as I can. I hope you found it as useful or more useful than last time. Um, I did look into a lot of stuff with this. Again, like I mentioned, it's very difficult to understand or absorb all the nuances and keep them in mind constantly as you write these you know, 12,000 word scripts, which is basically what this is, right? So just you have to accept this won't be perfect. It won't necessarily fit your guild perfectly. Um, and there are lots of caveats and that I've tried to you know, cover. And as mentioned, the disclaimer, people are people, gamers are gamers. This is just on the class. So I hope you found it all useful and I will see you in a video somewhat soon. Not exactly when, but I do have some ideas. Um, I know a lot of you are just big fans of the loot videos. That's fair enough. But if you're a fan of the other videos I have done, I've got some stuff in, in the pipeline, just trying to figure out some other stuff too, that, some obstacles to, to me spending time on WoW is kind of the main issue at the moment, um, alongside being here on December that delayed this video. So yeah. Happy days. Hope you find it useful. The sheet will be up as soon as I can get it up.